Author Angie Thomas found tremendous success with her first novel, The Hate You Give, being a bestseller and a major motion picture. And now, on her second book, On the Come Up, she explores the world of hip hop. And she joins me right now. Angie, hello. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing really well. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me today. Oh, thank you for having me. First of all, congratulations. Hate You Give, 100 weeks on the New York Times bestseller. Just That is just an amazing accomplishment. Yeah, that's that's phenomenal to me. If someone told me a year ago that the book would still be on the list, I would have thought they were joking. I'm just so honored to know that so many people are connecting with it and picking it up. That's phenomenal. Well, in your new book, On the Come Up, 16-year-old Brianna explores the world of hip-hop. She wants to be a rapper. Where was your inspiration for that character in the story? Yeah, um, On the Come Up is set in the same neighborhood as The Hate You Give, but it's not a sequel or a spinoff. Um, it takes place after the events of The Hate You Give, and it's about a 16-year-old girl named Brianna who wants to be a rapper, and her life is turned upside down when, one, her mom unexpectedly loses her job, and two, a song she makes goes viral for all the wrong reasons, and she finds herself in the center of a controversy too big for her to control, but as her family situation gets worse, she's desperate to make it, even if it means becoming the very thing everyone's made her out to be. Um, I was inspired by my own teenage years of pursuing a rap career. I tried it from ages 13 until 17, so I was inspired by that. Um, I was inspired by the fact that when I was a teenager, the biggest tragedy in my life was when my mom unexpectedly lost her job, and it really sent my family into crisis mode and turned my entire life upside down and changed the way my life was in so many ways. And then, too, um, with The Hate You Give, I experienced censorship attempts on the book. You know, there were attempts to ban it. There were a lot of challenges against the book. And experiencing that and knowing that so many of my favorite rappers dealt with similar situations really inspired me to have this look at what it means to be a young black person in America when freedom of speech isn't necessarily free for you. So I looked to a lot of places for inspiration for this one. Also, a reoccurring theme of the book is about different generations and, of course, family. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. You know, for so many kids, that this is their life. You know, for me personally, I was raised in a two-parent household, and my two parents were my mom and my grandma. And for so many kids, that's their life. And I really wanted to talk about that and what it means to have multiple generations, you know, in a family and how they can clash and how they can connect and how they can um, try to um, get through challenges and all of those sorts of things. So it was it was fun at times to write, but it was also um, it was also a a little challenge at times too because I really wanted this family to be authentic but I also wanted to show that you know dysfunction is normal for so many of us we have dysfunctional families so I hope that kids recognize that and understand it's all right um, it's all right if your family is a little dysfunctional too <laughs> your main character is a 16 year old teenager and you dabble in some teen romance was that difficult for you how do you write a teen romance you know it was the romance part is always a little tricky for me um, because I, I focus so much on the other parts of the story and I never want my readers to feel like this has to happen in their lives for their lives to be valid you know so with the teen romance in this one I really wanted to look at what it means to like someone and to, and to like someone for most of your life and start to question your feelings for them and wonder if that person is the person you know the truth is the person we end up with in life it's rarely ever the person we liked when we were in high school so what does it mean when you start wondering and questioning those feelings you know and and I want my readers to know it's okay to grow apart it's okay to grow up it's okay to change and it's okay to question all of that so I look forward to the reactions I'm going to get from that storyline so they say writing your second book is a lot more difficult than writing the first book. Any truth to that? Yes. <laughs> Yes, it was definitely hard. Um, at first it was hard because it felt like I had thousands of eyes watching over my shoulder every time I wrote. And it was like, if I wrote a line, they would say, well, Star wouldn't say that. And I just had to get to the point of saying, well, Brianna would say that. And it really was, honestly, it was one of the best things that happened to me because I learned to listen to my own author voice, my internal voice, and follow my own instincts and not write it for anyone else, but to write it for myself. And I think that's just what I have to do going forward, period, as a writer. Um, I can't think about my readers or the potential readers or what they may think or what they may want. I have to write the story that I want to read at the end of the day, the story from my heart. So I'm, I'm thankful for the experience, but it was definitely hard at first. Well, 16-year-old Brie in the book, of course, she wants to be a rapper. And you took on the task of writing actual raps in the book for her. So tell me, did you listen to a lot of rap groups or were you familiar with hip hop already? 
Yeah, you know, um, I, I had to study a lot of rappers before I wrote those raps. I, I really wanted to pay homage to the art form and respect to the art form as a skill because so often people write rap off as being nonsense and this and that when it's truly poetry. And when rappers are doing it well, you know, it really takes skill set. So I, I listen to some of what I consider, you know, the greats. I listen to Tupac. I listen to Notorious B.I.G. You know, yeah, I like them both. You know, I, I listen to Kendrick Lamar. I listen to J. Cole. I listen to Lauryn Hill. Um, I even listen to, you know, like Cardi and Nicki and all of them. I, I studied them as much as I could and their styles and their pat and the word patterns that they use so that I could pay homage to that and respect to it. So I honestly came away with even more respect for rappers because what they do, it takes true talent. I don't know, Angie, we could have a second blossoming career here. Are you any good at rapping? <laughs> uh, you know, I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I can do it. Um, I don't know if that's a career path for me. Um, I, it took me too long to write the raps in the book. So it would take me about two years to come up with an album. <laughs> Angie, thank you so much for speaking to me today. Congratulations on the book and make sure you come visit us in Las Vegas. We'd love to have you. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. On the Come Up is now in bookstores and available online. Make sure you pick it up. It's a great read. And for more reviews and interviews, just surf on over to my website at VegasFromCritic.com. I'm Jeffrey K. Howard in Las Vegas. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next time.